In this video, we'll be looking at several issues related to diabetes, including a doctor who says never, never test after a meal. We'll also look at a certain type of bean which spiked blood glucose as high as a piece of pie. And we'll look at the question, is fruit evil? Well, we're going to be looking at some more of the comments and talking about various situations relating to diabetes, insulin resistance, and overcoming runaway blood sugar. Now, before we get into some of the new comments, I have to revisit an old comment because on a previous episode of Beat Diabetes, I was going through the comments and I said, well, here's a picture of uh, this guy that he sent in, and there was no picture. Some of you made a, a comment and said, where's the picture? We didn't see it. Was that just me? No, <laughs> it wasn't just you. Uh, it was the fact that I was doing the video editing late at night, and sometimes uh, it I, I work late into the night to get these things ready for upload, and I try to be diligent to get them out when they're supposed to get out. And so sometimes that means I'll be up late and I'll be tired and I just uh, drop the ball on that one. So anyway, this is from uh, a man that uh, has said that he is hopefully going to be open to doing an interview. So you're going to be seeing a whole lot more of him. But for right now, he sent in this picture. It's a headless picture, but it shows him wearing the old pants that he used to. This is the man who dropped 200 pounds and he mentioned that when within the first week where he went really low carb, he had to come off his type 2 diabetes medication. His sugar had dropped too low. I love that. <laughs> his sugar was so low, he had to drop it. And, and that does bring about a, a very valid point, which is you got to be careful. When you go from a high carb diet to a low carb diet, uh, you got excellent chances of low sugar. And uh, so you, especially if you're taking medication or if you're taking insulin, so you have to be careful. You should do it in uh, working with a doctor. You should be te testing your blood sugar frequently and making sure you don't get hypos because that can definitely happen. All right, well, let's get on with some new comments and questions. Uh, here's a comment that says, Thanks, Dennis. You inspire me a lot. Thanks for your technique, especially one hour after meal test. Very powerful and informative way to control a blood sugar. Keep posting your YouTube videos. They are amazing and informative as well. And this is from a man, at least I think is a man. Some of these names I'm not so sure about, but he's from Saudi Arabia. And I just think that is so cool. You know, we are kind of like a big family here and... Uh, the issue of diabetes transcends politics, it transcends liberal or conservative, it transcends so many things, and it transcends religion. Not that religion is important. I'm a Christian, I make no bones about it. But we are one club and we're trying to help one another. And, you know, of course, I'd love nothing more than to convert people to Christ. But whether you convert to Christ or not, I want to help you get your blood sugar in line. So, anyway. We are thankful for this man from Saudi Arabia and so many reports I get from all over the world. And it is exciting to me to think that in my little house in a little uh, town in Texas, I won't tell you which town, but it's not far from the Dallas, it's in the Dallas area, just a, a sort of a suburb of Dallas. But in my little town, I make these videos and they go out and touch people all over the world. Uh, wow, what can I say? But thanks be to God, and I'm happy to live in an age where this is even possible. So anyway, yeah, the one-hour test. Now, I will say this. It's not necessary that everybody should take a one-hour test. It depends on when you peak, and I plan to do a program about that at some point, about helping you find when you peak, because we don't all peak at the same time. I tend to peak around one hour, not with all foods. Some foods will take longer, some shorter. But typically, with most meals, one hour is a pretty good general average. And so if I want a quick test, and you know, it's just not practical to be testing yourself uh, four times just to check a meal. I mean, it's nice if you have the patience, the time, the money, the, the testing strips to test yourself before the meal, 
30 minutes after the meal, an hour after the meal, hour and a half after the meal, two hours after the meal. You know, ideally, maybe that's what you would do. But let's be real, folks. Most of us can't do that. And most of us wouldn't want to do that. I'll do it for some of these uh, experiments and tests that we do here on this channel. But typically, most of my life, since I've been testing myself, I'll just hit it at one hour. A lot of times I won't even do beforehand because if I haven't eaten in five or six hours, I have a pretty good idea where my blood sugar stands. I could be surprised, but I have a pretty good idea. But that one-hour test is a good general test for me. But you'll need to test yourself, and one of the th things you can do is just test yourself several times after several meals and see when you tend to peak. I tend to peak at one hour, and, so, and, and I have a feeling a lot of diabetics and pre-diabetics will. So that is a good general test. All right, let's go on with another comment. This person says, my doctor only wants me to test before my meal. She says testing afterwards doesn't matter because I cannot bring it down with anything except with my medication anyway. So it's not like I can fix it. She only wants me to test before each meal and before my bedtime insulin. She says I should test this way because testing beforehand would tell me what my sugar is before eating so I can adjust accordingly. Hey, I get it. And, you know, listen to your doctor by all means. I'm not saying you shouldn't test before meals, especially if you're on insulin and you need to determine how much insulin to give yourself. So listen to your doctor about that. But there is absolutely no harm that can come to you by testing after a meal and finding out when you peak. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, it's not so much that you can fix things. Like she said, you can't really fix it. But it provides an incredible motivation. And can I say that for the problem that, that the problem for most diabetics is motivation more than almost anything else? Most of you know what you should do. You know what you should avoid. But a lot of you are just not motivated. And this channel has helped a lot of people, and I'm thankful for that. But one of the great motivators is that post-meal blood sugar test, because when you see it, you look at it and you say, yeah, that's great. I can eat this meal again. Or yuck, that's horrible. I've got to make some changes. How do I know that? Well, that's exactly what happened to me. I tested and tested and tested. And sometimes I got a yucky feeling, just a terrible feeling. Ah, oh, that's too high. What did I do? I'll never forget uh, trying a, an ice cream that said uh, sugar free or no sugar added, I think is what it said. And uh, I thought, okay, this is good for someone with blood sugar problems. And I just just randomly thought, you know, why not test? And I tested, and it was up to something like 185. And I was like, well, I don't care what that label says. I, I can't eat this. And I never ate that ice cream again. Where did that motivation come from? That little blood sugar monitor and the one-hour test afterwards. Testing yourself beforehand may be exactly what you need, especially if you're taking insulin and you have to determine the insulin dosage you're going to give yourself before a meal. That may be perfect, but testing afterward is going to help you discover how to eat and craft a diet that will work for you. So if you find that you typically peak at one hour, then that's when you want to test. If for you it takes it's one and a half hours or two hours, then test then. So I'm not saying do it exactly like Dennis does, but I'm saying find out. Find out where you peak, and it will help you go a long way at bringing your blood sugar down, bringing your A1C down, bringing your fasting glucose down, and motivating you to eat the way you should and creating a diet that you need. Here's an interesting comment. This person says, I'm so sad. I thought I was on track with insulin resistance. At Thanksgiving, I ate my favorite food, pecan pie. My blood glucose went up to 163, not surprisingly. Well, mine would probably go higher than that, and a lot of diabetics would, but went up to 163 after pecan pie. But what really shocked me was that I ate some canned lima beans, and this was at a later time, and my blood glucose went up to 164 from a level of about 100. I thought I was doing something conservative. It's two days later. I'm still not back to normal. I it doesn't seem to be all sugar and fiber in what spikes blood glucose because this meal, that is the lima beans, were mountains lower in sugar and much higher in fiber than the pie. And yet, disaster, the lima beans spiked this individual as much as the pie did. 
Well, that's one of the uh, deceptions that a lot of people have when they first get involved in testing or they begin to think about eating conservatively so that their blood glucose stays low. A lot of times we, we have our bad guys picked out, pies, cakes, candy bars, uh, things like that, Putting, dumping a lot of sugar on uh, a cereal. But so often we don't realize that some things that can be uh, seemingly innocent and innocuous may do a real number on us. How will we know? Well, again, we do post-meal blood sugar tests, and we find out what works and what doesn't for us. Now, beans are kind of an iffy food for a lot of diabetics. I can get away with beans sometimes. And if I have a small bowl of my wife's uh, homemade lentil soup, I can usually get away with that and do pretty well. In fact, I've had a small bowl of lima beans or lentil bean soup, and then I've had half of a small apple with some peanut butter, and I still had good numbers. Some people couldn't get away with that. So again, the purpose of this channel is not to say, well, you know, here I am, Dennis Pollock. I, I figured it all out for you, and all you have to do is just do like Dennis, and everything will be great. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, I'm just saying I figure some things out for me. And you need to figure some things out for you. And one of the keys is going to be your blood sugar monitor. But what you will probably find out is some things you thought were fine, you thought were healthy, like whole grain bread, like brown rice, like beans, may be a bit problematic for you. I typically don't like to say foods are evil. I really don't think too many are. Now, candy bars, <laughs> I would say, are evil, and, and uh, sugar-frosted flakes are evil, and, and, and there are some uh, what I would call evil foods, but so many foods are not really evil, and many people can eat them all their lifetime long and not have a problem. But for diabetics who have a problem with carbs and processing carbs, they are problematic. So take the word evil out of your, out of your vocabulary when it comes to natural foods and substitute the word problematic. I saw one individual who has a YouTube channel, very popular uh, doctor, and this person uh, had a video that was titled, Fruit is Evil. Well, I immediately disliked that particular video. I like this individual. I think they do a good job as a whole, but I didn't like that. Uh, I don't think fruit is evil. Now, granted, we've kind of genetically modified some of our fruit and we've made it uh, worse than it normally would be. But fruit is problematic and you've got to be careful. Do I ever eat fruit? Occasionally, I'll eat the berries for sure. And once in a while, I'll have a little small, these little mini oranges. I, I read that they have about eight grams of carbs, of net grams of carbs, for one of, these, uh, one of these small mini oranges. I think they call them halos or clementines. And sometimes if I'm having a very low-carb meal, I know that I can fit in eight grams of carbs and still be okay. And I'm thinking, well, I've got a whole day's worth of vitamin C with one of these clementines. I don't do it a lot because, uh, you know, I still try to stay away from things like that. And, and fruit has this fructose that can be another problem with your with your fatty liver, so I don't do it a lot, but sometimes I do. At any rate, test yourselves and you'll find out uh, that some things that you thought were just fine actually are not. Well, there's a lot more questions. I'll get to them another day, but for now, we just want to encourage you. You can do this. You can, you can make it. You can see victory. Almost anybody can. You say, yeah, but I think I'm a type 1, or I am a type 1, and I can't even produce glucose. Well, you can still see victory. I mean, you'll have to take insulin. Dr. Bernstein takes insulin, but he eats a very low-carb uh, meals, and he knows exactly how much insulin to give himself, so he's not taking lots of insulin. He's just taking small amounts, what he needs to cover, very low-carb meals. And the guy's in his 80s, and he's still practicing. He's still healthy. He's still doing very well. So. I, I believe in victory for everybody, whether you're type one, type one and a half, type two, there's victory for you. You just have to figure it out and, you know, ask God to help you do a lot of testing, experiment, talk to your doctor, work with your doctor, make sure you've got a good doctor who is, is uh, proactive in dealing with this and doesn't just give you a lot of pills and doesn't say a word about diet. I want to let you know about my latest book. Its title is, You Can Achieve Normal Blood Sugar. 
And if you like blood sugar tests, you will love this book. I use all kinds of blood sugar tests on all sorts of foods to demonstrate the way of escape from high blood sugar and diabetes. But of course, I don't just share the tests and the results, I also share insights as to why the tests turned out the way they did, the best diet for diabetics who want to get their A1C score down in a hurry, and a whole lot more. If you've just been diagnosed as diabetic, or if you know somebody who's just been diagnosed as diabetic, I think this book could be a major help. I'm offering the book along with a DVD which contains valuable information newly diagnosed diabetics need to know as a package deal. See the description notes below this video for a link which will take you to my website where you can order the book and the accompanying DVD. Now, sadly, at this time, we can only ship to Americans, but if you're in another country, there is an option for you. You can get my video series as immediate downloads and download all nine videos to your phone or computer and be watching the videos in a couple of minutes. This video series is titled Overcome Runaway Blood Sugar, and while it's not exactly the same as the book, it will give you the fundamentals you need to know to start getting that blood glucose down and headed toward the normal range. God bless. See you again soon.